If you want to take photos of your car that look less like this and more like this, then this video is going to help you. G'day, I'm Peter and I shot cars commercially for years for magazines and car manufacturers. In this video, I'm going to share a handful of tips that'll help you to master the basics so that you can start banging out images good enough to hang on your lounge room wall. Now, like most of you, I don't live near an amazing location like the Furka Pass in the Swiss Alps or the Ring Road in Iceland. But that doesn't matter because while a great location certainly helps, it doesn't guarantee great photos. Technique does. So let me show you a few very easy to learn techniques that'll get you from ooh to ooh. A fortnight ago, my son and I visited my dad up in the mountains and I had three very simple goals. One, enjoy their company. Two, go for some nice walks in the local bushland. And three, get some photos of my car with my recently purchased Sigma 105mm f1.4 lens. The first two were easy enough, but the third one was quite different to what I expected. But it did give me a chance to employ and now share um, a few of the very important lessons that I learned in my commercial car photography days. The little town of Jamison, where my dad lives, has a population of just 380 souls. Nestled on the eastern shores of my childhood happy place, Lake Eildon, it's a peaceful and visually stunning place to visit. Whenever I go there, my first order of business is usually to wander around my dad's beautiful gardens, camera in hand, and take a bunch of photos, and then move further afield to go and photograph some of the beautiful surrounding landscape. However, since I bought my Porsche about a year ago, I've been keen to sort of reacquaint myself with automotive photography again. So this time, that's all I'm thinking about. However, after discussing potential shooting locations with my dad, I decide instead to stay put and just photograph the car in his driveway. This turns out to be a blessing in disguise because it forces me to remember three very valuable lessons that I learned in my days of shooting cars and motorbikes at road tests and press launches. First, you have to work with the location and the weather that you're given. This also means dealing with background distractions, unwanted reflections, and less than ideal vehicle placement. Second, you can't change the light, so you may as well incorporate it. Embrace it and incorporate it in your shots. If you have bright, harsh light, well, then you look for bold lines, interesting geometric shapes, often created by harsh shadows, and embrace the high-key, high-contrast look. If it's dull and overcast, then you see it as an opportunity to go for a dark, brooding look with lots of rich shadow colours or muted vintage tones. And third, almost any location can work, providing you simplify your compositions, you know, use wide apertures to create a shallow depth of field and isolate your subject, and go for interesting angles and perspectives. And fourth, if an image still looks a bit meh, well then you can reinvent it by converting it to monochrome. And that often works beautifully. Actually, on that subject, uh, post-processing your images, whether it's in Lightroom or Photoshop, is how you get your images from good to gorgeous. Just like in the days of darkroom processing, the initial image is the starting point. Yes, if your composition is on point and the light was plain ball, then the image may well be adequate, exactly as it is, out of camera. But it's a bit like a salad without dressing, or a haircut without styling. It could be better. I'll probably do another video showing how I process the images in this video, but just know that none of the images that you're seeing in this video looked exactly like that straight out of camera. Okay, here are some other handy tips. Number one, use a polarizing filter. A car is a huge convex mirror and it reflects everything around you. On the glassware, the door panels, the bonnet, the trunk, all that sort of stuff. So use a polarizing filter to minimize reflections. If you're shooting near water or foliage, then a polarizing filter can also help to see through the water, cut through the reflections in the water, minimize reflections on foliage, and really boost the colors of those areas where reflections exist. But just a warning though, a polarizer can only reduce reflections on one surface plane at a time. So when you're shooting a car, you have to choose which surface matters most in that image and reduce the reflections. Turn the polarizing filter to reduce the re reflections on that particular area. You can't do all of them at once. However, what you can do is you can take multiple photos from exactly the same spot with your camera mounted on a tripod with your exposure locked off and take multiple exposures with the circular polarizer turned to different locations to reduce reflections on different surfaces of the car if you want to do this and then combine those images manually in Photoshop or Lightroom. Tip number two, look for ways to frame your image with a wide aperture, shallow depth of field and something blurred in the foreground. Wide apertures and shallow depth of field isn't just for blurry backgrounds, it works beautifully on foregrounds as well. Number three, use a focal length of 50 mil or above. 50 mil is great because it gives you a very natural perspective, much like what we see with our own eyes. Focal ranges between say 80 and 135 mil are fantastic for cars because they compress the perspective, they bring the front and the rear of the car together, closer together when you shoot from dead front on, front three quarter, 
dead rear and rear three quarter and they create a really nice looking perspective on the car and they also make it easy to achieve a nice blurry background with a wider aperture because the natural compression of those focal lengths also help to blur out the background and that's one of the reasons why i love the sigma 105 f 1.4 i almost bought the 85 1.4 but i'm really glad i bought the 105 it's just such a special lens it's just perfect for shooting cars and all of the images shot on this trip to my dad's house were shot with that lens now anything over 135 mil um, also works nicely the higher up you go in focal length the more it compresses the front and the back of the car which is great for dead front on and dead rear on shots to a lesser degree for front three quarter and rear three quarter definitely not so good for dead side on shots because it really makes the left and right side of the car compressed to a point where it almost looks like a 2d cutout but for dead front on dead rear on longer lenses anything up to 500 whatever you want can look really interesting it just means you've got to get a long way away from the car that's all now shots taken at focal lengths of say 35 mil and below that um, can be great for environmental shots where the environment where the car is placed is the star of the show this shot here for example was done with a 14 millimeter lens the fourth tip if possible try shooting your car at pre-dawn or post-dusk where the sky acts like a huge softbox with either warm or magenta or cool tones. It can look really special. Now you'll need a tripod for these shots if you want to avoid using stupidly high ISOs, which introduces digital noise, you know, graininess to your images. If you want to avoid that, then you're going to need to shoot with a tripod. But some of the best advertising photos you'll have seen of cars are shot at this time, either uh, before the sun comes up or just after the sun has gone down. Now backlit dawn or dust shots can be lovely as well with the warm glow kissing foliage and long shadow stretching towards a camera adding a sense of real depth to your image. And finally try shooting some images either much higher or much lower than eye level. You'll be surprised the kind of looks that you can get when you do this. I've always liked shooting cars at ground level where the camera is literally sitting on the ground and there's some shots in this video like that. But also dead overhead shots as well or from a higher perspective. Some of my favorite shots recently have actually been shot with my drone. Oh and here's a pro tip. Never turn the front wheels of the car such that the tire tread is facing the camera. If you're going to turn the wheel, then showcase the face of the wheel. Unless you're shooting a tire commercial, of course, then that's different. As I mentioned, I shot most of the images this weekend with the Sigma 105 f1.4. And it's a spectacular lens. But a great lens does not make a great photo. A photographer does. So if you only have a kit lens with your camera or a 50mm lens, you can still get really good photos of a car providing you focus on your composition that is what you include in the shot and more importantly what you leave out of the shot and the perspective and the angle from which you shoot and also the direction and the quality of the light that's striking the vehicle that you're photographing all of these things matter far more than the lens that's attached to the front of your camera remember the other tips too but most of all experiment take lots of photos but be intentional about them don't just spray and pray after a while you'll get a few that you're really proud of and at least one that's good enough to hang up on your land room wall by the way, if you want to see how versatile a 50mm lens really is, just have a look at this video here. Otherwise, you can have a look at this video here, which YouTube has recommended just for you. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. See you next time.